what would people like the next step to be? Andrew, I don't know whether you have got an idea or, or have yourself. Have you? Right. I mean, this is just a consideration. I think, uh, you know, a few of us have been talking about this for a little while. I mean, for a start off, um, we have to embrace some form of um, health testing and character testing for our animals. Um, it's, nobody's got anything to hide, so consequently, we would embrace it, providing it was done in a manner that was, that was uh, satisfactory to everybody. We, we, a few of us, like I say, got together. We, I know this sounds a strange thing, but we kind of considered the possibility of having an MOT for dogs. Um, at the moment, there's 15 breeds are being targeted, and I think that is such a terrible situation. In the same way that last year, when we, you know, it seems small, it seems such a, a small consideration now when we were talking about powder and hairspray. But, you know, one or two breeds were being targeted by the Kennel Club, and it was not fair. And this situation now, with 15 breeds being targeted, it's not fair, because to suggest that there is no potential for any of the other breeds to have a problem is ridiculous. So consequently, um, we considered the possibility that before the age of 12 months old, um, an MOT certificate, I'll use the word MOT certificate, it's just how we sort of worded it, that all dogs being shown um, had a one-off certificate supplied by their own vet, or indeed if they wanted to do it at a show, they could get it done at the show. Um, what this would be, would be not an intensive scrutiny of the animal to see if, you know, if, yeah, I mean, we're not trying to find problems that are not a, a welfare issue to these dogs. We're just trying to make sure that they're healthy and can lead normal lives. So consequently, if a dog was tested, for instance, and had slipping patellas, at 12 months old it would have slipping patellas, at 10 years old it would have slipping patellas, and obviously would fail. Um, if a dog, if a Pekingese had closed nostrils and therefore it had breathing problems, it would have them at 12 months old, it would have them when it was 10 years old. The point is that gen the, the exaggerations that the Kennel Club suggest, well, exaggerations can cause problems, there's no question of it. And so I'm not talking about the individual uh, examinations that are required by our, our individual breeds before, you know, um, I have American Cockers, we have them eye tested for cataracts and PRA. I'm not talking about the specific tests that are required for each individual breed. I'm suggesting uh, just an overview. Can, is the dog got healthy eyes? Are the eyes streaming? How, can the dog breathe normally? Um, or is the dog unable to breathe? Um, is, the, is the dog got a terrible character? Does it want to bite the judge? Is it terrified? Um, can it walk properly without, you know, has it got slipping patellas? I'm talking about a five-minute um, examination by your own vet, as I say, or by the, a vet at the, uh, at the dog show, and, a, and a, it would involve them being microchipped so that we could recognize which dog was which. It would involve this, the paperwork being stamped, a copy of the paperwork going to the kennel club, and once that, can, that, that was received, that would be the end of it. It would then be up to judges if they felt when they were judging that a dog, it was hard to understand if a dog with terrible slipping patellas had got one of these um, MOT certificates, then that could be fed back and you know the vet could be questioned as to why a dog with such a, an obvious health issue had been given this certificate. The point is, if we did this across the board, what, I, I feel certain there's nobody in this room who show dogs currently who, whose dogs wouldn't pass those. There are people outside of our show world who, are, who have no care, no consideration, nothing, none whatsoever as to what they're breeding. And I think if the Kennel Club embraced this idea, then this could be moved further. And the fact that this simple MOT certificate would be required by both parents before the Kennel Club would... Uh, register a litter. So all the puppy farmers um, and all the people who think, oh, I'll have a litter because I want a holiday next year, all of those people would be, would have to um, have those certificates in place before the Kennel Club would register a litter. That being the case, for the first time ever, 
a litter that were Kennel Club registered would actually have a mark of quality. Something that the Kennel Club have tried to suggest in the past is the case, but of course it's not the case, because whilst indiscriminate breeders are given the opportunity to use the Kennel Club system, you know, we know there's so many horror stories out there. And, and as show breeders, we would be vindicated because we're already breeding very healthy dogs. So that is um, a recommendation that we thought of that, may, you know, it wouldn't need some fine tuning. But in principle, a one-off at 12 months old, a one-off um, MOT certificate, which would do for life. And then after that, you would be obviously responsible for doing the specific tests that we all do for our, for our breeds, you know, FN in English cockers and, you know, so on, hip dysplasia in various breeds. So that would be the responsibility. But anyway, that's, that's kind of what we're thinking about on a, on a general basis. So uh, I'm inviting some questions. The gentleman there, please. Larry Wilkes, I'm involved with HPR breeds and quite honestly, I, I sympathise with everybody that went through the trauma that they suffered at Crufts this year and I don't think anyone should have to go through that. The meeting tonight, I think it's too soon for us to come up with alternatives to what the Kennel Club's got up, got up to. I think what we need to do is to get some sort of working party that the Kennel Club will be prepared to listen to. There are enough eminent people in this room today who they should be able to listen to who've got the experience in terms of the dog world, dog breeding and dog showing. And I think the first thing that we as the members here tonight would like to say to the Kennel Club is to stop the testing while we do discuss what we need to do and why we need to put the things that are wrong right. And I don't think anyone should have to go through what you Yes, madam. Can I just say, Mike, that some of vets are already doing that? Yeah. Oh, sorry. They already do it in, in our area. If we take puppies along for the first injection, right, etc., and they look over them, and then within six to eight months, we get a letter to say, would we like to take the puppy back so the vet can give them another health check? So some vets are actually doing that, but they're not giving you a certificate. But I'm sure that possibly rest of the other vets do exactly the same because they're doing it in my area. Uh, hold on, can I just say one thing before we go on? The one thing I forgot to mention was that if, this, if people agreed with the, you know, this, the uh, principles behind this idea, the one thing we wanted to do was for our kennel club, if they took it on board as a sensible idea, and I think in actual fact if the kennel club did push this, it would actually raise their, their image in the eyes of the dog game, well the dog world and the general public, but um, if our kennel club would take this on board and then they lobbied the BVA to make sure that if you were living in Surrey you weren't paying £200 for one of these MOT certificates and if you were living in Lancashire, Lancashire it would be 20 quid. So, but the point is, I mean, there's no reason why something, something so simple and something that would take so little time, if the BVA would agree to... Um, uh, to a figure, I mean, I, there's no reason why this shouldn't be, you know, if, if we were paying a one-off fee of, say, £25, I'm sure, I mean, I think the vets would make a lot of money, particularly if it went si outside of the dog game and became a requirement before the Kennel Club registered puppies. So I think it, there's a lot of benefits. Well, I, th I think, um, I see where you're coming from, and I think self-monitoring has got to be the way forward. I don't think once would be enough. I think it would have to be like a yearly MOT. Yeah. Personally, I don't care what the rules are. I want them to be the same for everybody. Yeah. And that's at every level. <laughs> and the disciplinary things. We get somebody does something, you know, they get a year. Somebody else does something else, they get nothing. The thing is, there are dreadful things wrong at the Kennel Club. It's not just about this issue and the 15 breeds. I know we're trying to concentrate on that. But we are in a mess, and it stems right from the top. This lady in red, please. Uh, Denise Bucknell, Neapolitan Mastiff Club. This, this initiative that you're talking about now has already been implemented recently by the Neapolitan Mastiff Club. Not only to monitor dogs on an annual basis, We've also got several vets on board who will do it for a specified cost, 25 to 30 pounds per dog in-house, 
but we've also got one of our vets coming to our show to undertake this MOT at our show so that not only can we get the certificates for our own dogs to prove to people that our dogs are fit and healthy, but also it helps the breed club to collect vital data about the health of our breed. My name is Doreen Joy and I'm a nobody. I'm just a pet owner and I'm in the welfare for the breed, Dog to Bordeaux Welfare. Um, this all started because the BBC decided to make a very biased opinion of dog show people. I've been showing for eight years and it's the best thing I've ever done in my life. I'm 40 years old and it's my first hobby I've ever, ever had in my life. I just want to say, with all the health checking and everything, it's the majority of the people that I meet at shows are responsible people that want to breed good and healthy dogs. Pedigree dogs decided to target breeders and people that show because if you didn't show you wouldn't care. People that don't care don't show because they're just producing crap after crap that's putting our breed in the toilet and your breed in the toilet. The Kennel Club, the Kennel Club are never ever not going to register a litter from unhealthy parents. Their registrations make them a hell of a lot of money, i.e. why they've sold carriages for certain excess amounts of millions of pounds, as I know exactly how much they sold it for. So what I'm saying to you is that rather than say we've got health tests and health tests that, until that is all lined out, why doesn't the Kennel Club and people that love their dogs and have loved their breeds, I'm a newbie, I've only been in my breed for eight years, some of you have been in your breeds for 40 years and showed loyally for 40 years, why can't we make our own side of showing, the good side of showing? I've never been to a show and had a bad experience. I've met some wonderful people from all breeds, even little yap yap terriers that really sometimes do irritate me. But I've met people from good for all breeds and I think the BBC have made the documentary slagging off people that care. It's not the people that are in this room and the breeders that show that are causing health problems in your breeds. It's the breeders that are breeding purely to sell puppies and to make money that are causing entropium, heart conditions, epilepsy and hip displacers in, in your breeds. They're the people that are the problem, but the BBC can't target them because they're their friends. They're the person that lives two doors up from them. They're the person that pays their wages. So until this health testing issue is sorted, why can't the Kennel Club, with their millions of pounds, make a documentary on the good parts of showing and how showing is important in people's lives and how it's made me a better person and you a better and responsible person while everything's ironed out so we can come back and say, no, it's not just about breeding unhealthy dogs. It's about people having a good social outlet where they meet good people. For young people, the Young Kennel Club, where you've got junior handling. They never show junior handling. Kids, instead of being on the streets, get into trouble, show junior handling. Why can't we fight back with a positive side of dog showing while all these other health testings in the shows get... Thank started? you very much. Gentlemen there, please. Hello, thank you. I'm Tony Taylor. I have uh, Columbus Spaniels and German Wire Head Pointers, and I shall be wearing the flak jacket at Crufts next year when uh, she who must be obeyed is, is doing the breed. Um, the, many years ago, I, went, uh, I was involved in public relations, and I went along to... Uh, uh, Clarges Street and suggested that they might perhaps want to uh, engage the services of somebody involved in public relations and I was told it was it was nonsense, we, we don't need that sort of thing. Well I'll tell you something, it doesn't half need it right now. Now the situation that we, we find ourselves with in, in, in Columbus Spaniels is absolutely ridiculous and with, it, with all of these 15 breeds absolute nonsense and the lack of joined up thinking by the kennel club absolutely leaves me as a member of the kennel club totally and utterly speechless and i've heard the word humiliated and ashamed mentioned tonight and i've got to say i'm humiliated and ashamed to be a member of the kennel club and i hope that those who are members of the kennel club do actually take some action to make sure that we get something that is a bit more representative of uh, people in the world of dogdom. The last time I questioned governance at uh, the annual general meeting of the Kennel Club, I was told that my comments were insulting. Well, I'll tell you what, I feel pretty insulted by the way the Kennel Club have treated all of us. The lady... Uh, Equity fee, please. No, it's not me. Uh, my name is Julie Frost. Uh, I have gun dogs, uh, uh, Bracos and Welsh Springer Spaniels. Um, 
And I do have some concerns because it's not just the five breed, the 15 breeds. Many of our breeds have had our breed standards changed quite uh, sort of, you know, arbitrarily. The Braco, for example, is supposed to have a double dewlap. And now in the Kennel Club, um, the, the Kennel Club standards for in Britain, it, it says not exaggerated. Now, I don't know how you can have a double dewlap that's not exaggerated. It's very difficult for British judges to judge our breed to uh, the standard that they are elsewhere in the world. And I think some of the foreign uh, Bracos that come over are discriminated against because they look like Bracos. <laughs> now, but, but my point is, I understand what, what Mike is saying, but I do have some concerns about us trying to kowtow to the, you know, the, the requirements of the, the press and those people that have uh, you know, a dislike of, of pedigree dog showing because we can't keep running scared and I don't think we can keep appeasing them because they're not going to accept it. I come from a background in with working with children and I'm involved with training people to do assessments on children and to, to do tests on children. The concerns that I have around testing for dogs is that if we are really expect vets to be able to do these annual MOTs, there's not going to be an awful lot of moderation. What you need to have are agreed targets, you need to have a, a, agreed um, levels of, uh, of testing that we're not going to have if we just ask any vet or any of our own vets to, to start looking at our dogs and stamping things or not stamping things as they, as they depend upon it. You have standardised tests in everything, in medicine, in veterinary science. And when you have standardised tests, you have what they call validity and reliability factors. And you have things called um, confidence intervals. Now, a test that's 95% accurate, which many of our breed tests are, if you're looking at you know, some of our things for um, blood tests and so on, there, there's a 95% accuracy. In Bozengis, for example, my sister breeds those, we have uh, Fanconi testing that's had to be suspended recently because there were some errors and some difficulties with the labor laboratories that were doing the tests, sort of, you know, human error. So if you have a 95% success or, uh, or confidence interval, that means that one in every 20 tests is wrong. It's either accurate, it's, it's wrong because it says that, that there's, a, there's no error, or it's wrong because it says there is. So, you know, when we're looking at testing, we have to accept that it's not a science that's 100% reliable. And that's something that's validated, that they have moderation, where they have groups of people that come together to check each other, to test each other, to observe each other, to make sure things are done properly. When you have tests done by vets where they're just looking at eyes like they were at Crufts or they're looking at the length of ears now or there's too much hair on ears, I mean all sorts of ridiculous things at the moment, it's done subjectively on the opinion of an individual person. Now I think there are great difficulties there. Now I personally would not want to take my dog or any of my dogs to somebody who was going to be that subjective. Now I do health test all of my dogs to the excess or more than any of my breed clubs expect. I do additional tests because I want to do those tests because it, it's important to me to make sure that I breed healthy animals. But what I'm not prepared to do is to go to even my own vet that I have a reasonably good relationship with to ask their opinion where they're just going to do a tick sheet which is so very subjective that one year they might say, oh yes, you know, their eyes look okay. The next year, oh, well, I'm not sure about that. Does my vet really know what healthy gait looks like? I don't think so. And recently, I put my, my dog up on, um, on the veterinary couch because I needed to just have my, you know, the rabies vaccination. And the, the vet stood back in awe and said, wow, I've never seen a dog look as healthy as this. It's strong, it's healthy, it's shiny, it's fit, it's not overweight. How do you do this? I've not really seen this before. And I was so surprised, but the point is, vets are not used to seeing healthy animals like we can produce. We do produce healthy animals, we do look after our animals, we do make sure that they're health tested. And if the Kennel Club were, were only to accept registrations from dogs that had been health tested and the sires that had been health tested, then that would go a long way towards making healthy dogs that were Kennel Club registered. So I think we should go on the offensive, like Tony said, you know, we need to look at it from a PR point of view. We are doing the right thing. We are looking after the health of our pedigree dogs. And we shouldn't need a subjective opinion of a vet who perhaps has no knowledge of our breed and does not necessarily know what a slipping patella might look like if a dog ran away you know, and to and from the, from the vet. We, I haven't got an objection with, you know, my, my dogs are tested for eye disease by eye specialists who are BVA panellists. And those tests are moderated and they are double checked and I have some confidence in those tests being accurate. 
I wouldn't have confidence in my general vet, who's just a GP, of knowing the difference between glaucoma, not glaucoma, excessive tear duct entropion, and so on. So my own view really would be to support Larry at the moment, which is to, I think that we should be putting forward a cease of you know, this, this action and then maybe get a working party together to, to think about where we need to go next. But I personally would be opposed to, you know, to vets, general vets, making decisions about my dogs. Thank you very much. The lady at the back first, please. Hello. My name is Lisa Croft Elliott. Like my friend in Dogs Do Bordeaux, I am new to this. I've only got 43 years in this sport. I have two of the high profile, being Chinese Cresteds and Pekingese. I also happen to have Cardigan Corgis and Toy Poodles. So we've got the coat testing in the family as well. It seems to me, both working within the Kennel Club and being a member of the dog family, that we are the victims of a runaway PR train. We need to appear good and right to all. You can't appear right to everybody. I think we owe it to our dogs, and we're serving our dogs by doing the health testing. What we can't be is bullied. If I could just offer one small suggestion, which is Mr. Ogden suggested, if a class action suit were brought and we support the people that were held out of the groups and we stand behind and we ask for a suspension while then looking at a calm, sensible way to deal with dogs being dealt with in the show ring. I mean, I posed the question last night. If a vet is a judge on the day and puts forth a dog that another vet says no, is not fit, which vet's right? Um, it's in many shows that I go to in Europe, we're vetted as we go through the door. No runny eyes, no skin conditions, not visibly lame, by just vets. But they can look as this was supposed to be carried out if the dog is generally healthy, not measuring millimeters of nostrils, not measuring exact angles of haws. You've got to rely on the people who have been through the testing and the training, our judges, that they can tell if a dog is lame, if the eyes are train wrecks, if there's a problem. But again, it would be my most fervent hope that we will stand behind those that were blocked and help overturn this and then move forward. We all do the testing. We all believe in it. Let's show them that we mean it. Thank you very much. This lady here, please. Maureen William again. I feel it is very important from this meeting that we actually ask where is the evidence for the 15 breeds who have been identified? My understanding regarding um, the evidence for St. Bernard's was that the research was flawed right from the start because of their insufficient number of samples. And really, it just is based on some European directives without thorough evidence. And as we all know, there are lies, damn lies, and statistics. So I really feel that we should be asking the Kennel Club for the 15 breeds identified, where exactly is their evidence and how was it obtained? Can I just speak for a minute? The one thing for sure is that some of the breeds that are on the, 50, on the 15 breeds that have been uh, targeted, you can be an assured breeder, I believe, of pugs, you used to be, and you have no health testing. Now, there are problems with extreme cases of pugs that we see. We get them coming in for boarding. They, they're overweight. They don't breathe very well. So the thing is, it's all very well everybody saying that, you know, we have to do with this test and that test, and that makes everything all right. The fact is that we want to be in a situation where we're seen to be doing what we've always done, which is breeding healthy dogs with great characters. And the fact is that, you know, individually you might have glaucoma tests or, or, or HD tests, but the one thing for sure is that there are breeds that are on that list that don't have to have any testing done to be an assured breeder. You don't have any testing to, do, to, to be done. So consequently, there has, to be a, there has to be some sense of prevail. And to suggest that a vet, any vet, Who's, I mean, look, all of us go to vets who 
are not anti dog breeding because you very quickly you, you, you very quickly get the idea if you go to a vet who's antagonistic towards us. So I'm not saying that, you know, there's no vet going to, if a dog's lame, can't walk, can't breathe, they're not going to, they're not going to stamp one of these certificates. The point is that we want, to, we want to be in a situation where it's not trying to be politically correct, it's just we're in a situation where we are in danger from public opinion. We've brought it on ourselves to a degree because, well, the Kennel Club have brought it on to us ourselves because they never defended us immediately after pedigree dogs exposed. And the point was, whilst there was issues, whilst there were issues that was raised in pedigree dogs exposed, which was pertinent, the one thing that, the one message that never came from our Kennel Club was that we, if you want to buy a pedigree puppy, the best place to buy a pedigree puppy is from the show breeders because they import dogs for genetic diversity, they do all the testing, they make sure that they, they breed dogs that won't bite the judge, they breed dogs that can walk around the rings without being lame because for, out of our own self-interest, we, we cannot win without unhealthy dog, with unhealthy dogs. So consequently, we didn't get the backup, we've been fed to the wolves, and now we need to present something to the world that says we are we've nothing to hide the dogs that we show are perfectly healthy and the, and and these tests are not designed for somebody to rotate hips and try to pop pop patellas out they're, if they were if we were going to do it and we had the agreement of the bva it would be a test a simple test to make sure that these dogs had good characters that had no obvious welfare issues that, m that would make that dog's life a misery, be, you know, as a result of that. Thank you. Just to pick up on Tony Taylor's point earlier on, um, he is a, or in a former life was involved with PR, I believe. <clears throat> um, I know for a fact that when the first television program was screened, I'm talking about Pedigree Dogs Exposed, our Kennel Club was offered, free of charge, the services of one of the top PR companies in New York by the American Kennel Club, and they were, the offer was politely declined, and they were told, thank you very much, we have our own people to deal with that. And we've all seen what a mess that's got us into. That is a fact. Going back to Mike's suggestion, I think tonight we, we've got to be very, very focused here <clears throat> and, and not get bogged down with, with um, moving off from the point in hand. Um, yeah, is that Howard wants, wants to come in? Yeah, okay, okay. I'm, I'll shut up for a minute. You can, you can take over, Howard, and then I'll come back in a minute. So I've just got a suggestion, and it follows on the gentleman. Uh, on the far side from me, uh, what I was suggesting earlier, what I'm going to invite is that uh, for tonight's purposes, and I entirely agree that we have to be focused, we have to just address the issue that resulted in the group um, starting off in, the, in this way. And whilst I accept um, the notion perhaps of MOTs and so on and so forth, I think that's premature for the purposes of tonight's meeting and why we're all here. And can I therefore invite um, that we uh, agree, uh, as a group, um, the following. First, that we invite the Kennel Club to suspend uh, the vet check system. Second, uh, that we invite the Kennel Club, as a group, to agree that on the available evidence from Crufts, that the current system is flawed. And third, uh, that we invite the Kennel Club uh, not to uh, re-invoke the system until it is transparent, has clarity, and is fair. And that's what I invite uh, that we ag agree as a group. Do we take that as a proposal. Yes. So, can I have a seconder, please? <laughs> Stupid. 
Yes, if, well, the amendment can, may come in afterwards. Uh, that's, and as far as everybody's concerned, can I have a vote on that? Oh, we've got an amendment, sorry. The lady. If you don't know, my name's Joy Bradley. <laughs> I'm involved in SARPE. I'm the secretary of the SARPE Club of Great Britain. And I had the pleasure of judging Crufts this year. So if I could just make one amendment to that, um, and I hope you'll forgive me for saying, but I've made no secret of my issues with the high profile breeds. The fact that the Kennel Club singled out 15 breeds amongst all the breeds to me is abhor abhorrent. They never have given us they never have given us any reason why the 15 breed were on that list. In front of a witness, I did ask Dr. Barbara at Crufts last year what, why the, the Sarpe were on the list. <laughs> and I'm still amazed at the answer that she gave me. And it was, have you seen the greeting card on this stand because it portrayed a wrinkly puppy? And that was... Was it not the answer that Dr. Barber gave me that Sarpe were on the list? However, that aside, if I could just make one amendment to the third proposal, and forgive me if I've misunderstood it, but just read to me again what the third proposal was, please. Sorry, the third aspect was that it should not be um, uh, reintroduced uh, until it is transparent, has clarity, and is fair. And uh, should go across the board and not just 15 breeds. And that's, that's just the, well, the amendment. That, that, that may be incorporated in the word fair. Fair. Okay. Rather, rather than being too specific at, at this stage. They, they have to get accustomed to the fact that this group exists uh, and um, to um, take note. So, so that, as I see it, can be... Uh, part of the word fair, which can then be discussed subsequently. Are we happy? Yes, yeah, so you, the proposal is what Mr. Ogden put forward. We've had an amendment put forward. Would, how, we, we need to really have a, uh, a proposal for that, which we have. A second, a please for that. And is everybody in a vote for, for the word? In, can, well, at the moment, it, start, it, it stands and invite the Kennel Club not to revoke the system, to revoke the system, uh, uh, and not to re-enter until it is transparently clear and fair. Can we not just say fair and non-discriminatory, non -dis without discrimination? Because I can say that word. Are you happy with that, Howard? You are. Right. We now have a, a proposer, a seconder, please. Stevie Hall. And can we have a hand, a show of hands, please? Those in favour? Well, that's carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Howard, have you got that written down? Could we have it? Because I think we need to make absolutely sure that it is dead on in our records, please. Before Howard reads out his, his missive, he, he's did a marvellous job of ventriloquism then, because he said virtually pretty much what I was going to say. Um, my, my, own, my only um, quarrel with that was um, I think that this meeting is strong enough to use a word other than invite. I think the word should be demand. Yourself, very anxious, 
My name's Di Johnson. Surely one of the reasons we're here tonight are because our kennel club tried to placate the RSPCA. Yeah. Now let's be careful that we're not trying to placate the kennel club. Yeah. To test dogs after they've been judged makes a mockery of our whole judging system. <laughs> That's what I want to say. <laughs> Lawyer's writing is like doctor's writing, so I better read it out. This meeting invites the Kennel Club, one, to suspend the high-profile breed vet checks. Two, to agree that on the available evidence from Crufts, the existing system is flawed. Three, that they should not be reintroduced until they are transparent, there is clarity, fairness, and are non-discriminatory. Everybody happy with that? Uh, right, Andrew. No, I wasn't in any, in any way disagreeing with anyone. I just wanted it absolutely certain that everyone knew the wording on what, what they'd act, actually voted on. Um, okay, Martin, do you want to allow a few questions before I make the next proposal? Yes, madam. My name is Sue Whitehead. I show Tibetan Terriers. Whilst I think we've reached a good conclusion here, now we need people that are going to present this to the Kennel Club. Exactly. I think the idea of a working party is great, but let's not try and run too fast before we can walk. We need a figurehead. We need people that are going to present this and the Kennel Club are going to take seriously. We have at the front a list of every person's name that is here this evening. It's up to you gentlemen to decide how to get a representative body together. You can converse via email, you don't have to meet all the time, that we are presenting a united front with strength to the Kennel Club, not a bunch of faceless people. Thank you very much. I would say that Andrew was next moving on to this to try and get some sort of steering committee, but we'll take one or two more questions. Hello, uh, my name's Diane Garrett and I show Bull Mastiffs, and we're obviously not on the 50, 15 yet, but I think that will come. <laughs> what I would like to say is, along with what you're proposing for the Kennel Club and the group that you wanted to put together, I do think we ought to insist that one person from our body is present on all the consultations that the Kennel Club have because I think that they are very much a closed shop and we don't get to know everything that goes on and I just feel that we need some sort of proposal that one person that we vote from our body tonight is um, we insist maybe that they are consult that it's our representation in the Kennel Club um, for when they are discussing these points. That won't happen, but it's called Kennel Club Members and Kennel Club AGMs. But, you know, we're living in a democracy. No, we're not living in Russia. <laughs> I, think, I think before we move on to that subject, we'll let Andrew talk about what his ideas on it. But I have this gentleman here who'd like to say a few Thank words. You. Thank you. Two points, Mr. Chairman. First of all, uh, we have voted, but to make sure that we've done it absolutely correctly, may I humbly suggest that we have another vote on the, 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 the revised um, um, proposal that Howard made just now. Um, we didn't actually vote on that, so to make sure that we understand exactly what we're doing, we need to take another vote. That's the first suggestion I would make. The second is, this is a wonderful meeting and extremely encouraging, and I thank the, those on our behalf who've organized it. However, so many times in the past, and I've been showing dogs and involved for 45 years, 
So many times good people have come up with very worthy proposals and suggestions. And it's been rather like the old-fashioned headmaster, go away, little boy, we're not interested. I worry that we may be wasting our time tonight. And I, I, I want us very much to, uh, in line with what was the last speaker spoke, that we will have some clout. We have no rights, most of us, tonight. We have no right to demand. We have no right to invite. We are not members. We need the Kennel Club to change so it is open and it is democratic. That's right. And they need to know that. Thank you. The suggestion about having another vote on Howard Ogden's proposal, I thought this, that when he read it out the second time, we asked him to write it down to make sure we had minuted it absolutely properly. But we can, if, if everybody wants to, to be voted on again, we can do that. We had the proposal of, uh, there, it's had a second of Stevie Hall. If you want to have a show of hands, can we have a show of hands all in favor? Thank you. Anybody against? Unanimous, thank you. Yeah, there appear to be two abstentions. So if you could record that. I'm sorry, I didn't get this gentleman's name. Dan O'Connor. Mr. O'Connor, okay. Um, just to pick up on a couple of your points. We've come up with um, a proposal which I think is worded in such a way that it conveys very much the mood of the meeting and, and achieves pretty much um, the, the main objective of the meeting. Um, the primary, the primary re um, reason for d dissatisfaction was obviously the, the Crufts victimization, whatever, and the implementation of the veterinary exams, which we've covered in great detail beforehand. Um, Michael's idea about um, blanket health testing, I happen to think is extremely valid. Um, it would appear at this point in time um, that not all of you in the room are fully in favor of having every single dog um, examined to an agreed universal health certificate. So possibly at this stage of the game, this is something that needs to be dealt with um, a little further down the line. Whilst we have um, these recommendations which need to be forwarded to Clarges Street, um, Sue Whitehead jumped ahead of me um, because my, um, <clears throat> my proposal was going to be that. Um, from this evening's meeting, uh, we must form an organization and forget about past intimidation by Clarges Street, about you can't join any other organization. In this day and age, they have no power over that. We can join whatever organizations we want. So we need to form an organization. We need a title for that organization. And we need, um, from, from this evening's meeting, we need some kind of steering committee. Um, I, I loathe the word committee, but we certainly need um, a list of people um, who can get to work on, on the next, next step. Um, in reply to Mr. Connor's last remark, which was that we've all seen this before, and um, there's a lot of hot air exchanged, lots of good ideas come up, and people get told to go away, um, and that's the last you hear of it. We are not going to go away. Five thousand Facebook members, huge support within 24 hours of the PayPal account being set up for those people who can't get to this meeting, many of them from overseas. Within 24 hours, there was 1,500 pound in the PayPal account. What does that tell you? The messages of support from all over the world have been astounding, absolutely astounding. Um, not, not just from ordinary grassroots dog exhibitors, from high-profile kennel club people around the world. And um, 
you'll be amazed how many people around the world are going to be watching what's going on here tonight. Now, um, we don't want to get into a situation here where, where everything descends into a free-for-all. Um, we need to come up with um, a title. The Facebook um, group uh, was, was called Exhibitors Choice and Voice, which has served its purpose. Not everyone here is a Facebook member. We need something that is all-embracing um, and is as general as possible so that we can deal with as many topics within the canine fancy as we feel necessary. And um, in, in an earlier discussion, um, several of us have come up with a name uh, and it's going to be put forward to you for um, you, you may approve of it, you may hate it, but no, as a joke. <clears throat> We decided, and it's got to be pretty succinct, um, we felt that a suitable title would be the National Canine Alliance. <laughs> and a few nodding heads in the middle there. Marion, you, can you think of something better? I just think NCA, sort of like it trips off the tongue so well, doesn't it? It's what? Hi. The thing is, it needed to be general because if if this became something big, you know, really big, so that we did have a voice um, with the kennel club that was supported by a, a large membership, then we needed to be in a situation where we could you know, like fight on behalf of all aspects of the dog game. So judges, um, show secretaries, breeders, exhibitors. So the problem we faced before was that, you know, there was lots of things with exhibitors and breeders and this, this and this. We needed something very um, broad, with a broad spectrum so that we could, if, you know, that, that in the future, it could be, you know, it, we weren't limiting ourselves, as it were. And, uh, you know, that was just a suggestion. If anybody's got any other suggestions, then, you know, we're happy. If, if, if somebody wants something else, it's great. No problem. Yeah, sorry, the, the, the gold bowl. I, I was just going to suggest, if you want a succinct one, just drop the word national and just make it Canine Alliance. Yeah, yeah, Given yeah, we've yeah. got a lot of people from Europe and around the world who are backing us, just make it Canine Alliance. Thank you. Are there any other suggestions? A lady at the back there. Hello there. Why not International Canine Allowance or even Canine International Allowance? I think the general feeling is Canine Alliance is short, sweet, certainly international. Yeah. Judy? Hello, I'm Judy Averis. Um, I show terriers. The only problem is, with all this, we're all dog exhibitors, breeders, but what about all the other breeders? This year in the breeder supplement, out of 40 litres of, of Airedales bred, there was only five bred by exhibitors. So none of those have had the health tests. No. Um, you... Yes. Excuse me, yeah. we've only... Wait, please. So we have to think of a name that will exclude all the people that are just breeding for for money. So you need a name that excludes those that just breed in the backyard. Very difficult. Uh, this lady here, please. Good evening. Gail Simmons. Oh, I have pointers. The whole purpose of this meeting is because we are dedicated pedigree dog breeders and I feel that we should have pedigree somewhere in the title. Gentlemen, there, please. Um, I'm just going to say, I'd, I'd fear that we might start going round the boy two or three times here. So I'm going to take the gentleman's suggestion. I'm going to propose Canine Alliance. Thank you. Uh, before we, we get proceed on that, there's a lady there who'd like to say, say a few words. Um, just from. Uh, 
little bit about my business and thinking about the name, I'm concerned that Canine Alliance will fall too closely to Countryside Alliance if they start referring to the CA. Perhaps if we looked at Canine Rights Alliance, so CRA, just to pull it back. Animal rights. Um, canine rights. But just something. A gentleman there with the blue CA. shirt. Why not Canine Exhibitors Alliance? We are trying to distinguish ourselves from backyard breeders when all's said and done. The problem with that is, I, I, I mean, I agree, we, but the, it, it's been restrictive because there are judges involved here, there are breeders involved here. Uh, you know, so to be too specific, you know, it, it, the, our whole idea is to have something that's very broad based so that if this group became, did become large enough to have a very powerful voice, we could take on board a general view of the well-being of dogs. Thank you. Is somebody over there? Andrew Gullick, Norfolk Terriers. I've just uh, thought it might be worth using the word union instead of alliance um, to provide something that's putting us all together. No. Sir. Hello, my name's Brian Hill. I'm involved in Neapolitan Mastiffs and Bull Mastiffs. Um, just as a name, what about Canine Development Alliance? Because that's what we're all trying to do, develop the future of canines. We'll put it down. And we, I think we're yeah, going to have to have also a... also just mention something that I've, I've been trying to get my hand up for? Um, I believe, this is obviously my opinion, um, that over the years there are two separate elements have merged due to the Kennel Club knee-jerk reaction to the BBC programme. Um, first of all, dog shows, uh, they should be really to display the best of all breeds in a beauty competition where the judge's decision is final. Health, this is not just a pedigree dog's problem or a UK problem, but a worldwide problem. People at home with pets have the same problems. Puppy farms are out of control, which is a major problem. Really, I think we should revert back to the status quo with two elements must be split, where dog shows and other events free from veterinary intervention and the, K the KC should form a health foundation or something similar to deal with all health matters in the canine world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lady of the Green Jumper. <laughs> Julian and Freedy Masters. Sorry. I just wanted no, to sorry, say... Sorry, closer. No, no, just no, closer. Can you hear me now? Yes. Right. I just wanted to say, you know, we're on this canine thing for a name. The dogs. We never call them canines, we call them dogs. Can we try and think of something... I know it sounds professional canine, but... We love the dogs, don't we? Can we try and think of something with that, that in mind? One, no, one thing... We exposed. One thing I had put down, which we haven't put forward, I thought about, was Pedigree Dog Breeders Alliance. It was just that you didn't put the word pedigree in, and that's what we're here to defending. It's the pedigree dog that's sorry, under no, attack. You. You've just that. said what I've been waiting to say, that's all. No, sorry, we couldn't hear you. We've got the microphone closed. It was put the word pedigree in. That's the, that's the dog that's under attack, the pedigree dog. And that's what I would like to see. We're defending the pedigree dog. Okay. I'm sorry if I'm uh, monopolising things. I just, you know, the simple point with the, with the name, I think it needs to be short. And what, what you need to remember is in any form of uh, uh, corporate branding, you have a strap line underneath the, the name. And that, if you want to get your pedigree in, that, that's where you'll get it in, in the strap line. But keep, keep the name as short as possible. And can I suggest we move on with the vote as yeah, quickly yeah, as possible? Sure. I'll take three more suggestions. There's got one here, we've got two at the back over there. This is a proposal. Uh, could I propose Pedigree Dogs Alliance? We've got to get, take the other two. Two more, that's all I'm taking, then we vote. The Hi. lady, yep. Hello. Hello. Um, I'd like to put forward United Canine Alliance, UCA. I think we need the word pedigree, and I think we need the word responsibility. Mm. Can we not come up with something like responsible for pedigree dogs? That will then cover the judges, the breeders, and the owners. Yeah, can I just say, Di, I think that something, as the gentleman over there who's the PR expert, I think that a name with a strap line with some, you know, so that the, the name's very short and then the immediate strap line it, it, uh, satisfies, you know, that, the responsibility and the pedigree thing. Right. 
Yes, and lots. Horan, Cavaliers. I suggest that you, you say uh, show, show Dogs. You've got no. the Show Dogs Alliance. Too narrow. Too narrow. Sorry, thank and you. The, the other thing that I, I'd like to point out is we've got to have a representative for the Kennel Club. And my recommendation is that we have Andrew, we have Michael, and we have Howard. Because they're all three, they all three are like people with a dog with a bone. The word pedigree has been besmirched by, by pedigree jokes exposed. Could I suggest that purebred is used? Too long. No, it's too Right, thank you very much. No, I'm sorry, we're not taking any more. Sorry. Before it goes to the vote, can you all just focus for a sec? Um, Tony, who is emerging as our PR guru, and I have a horrible feeling is going to get very much involved with this organization, um, has made some var valid points about the, the brevity of the title, backed up by a strap line. Um, Mrs. Johnson, sage that she is, um, made the, the, the point very forcibly that we should include somewhere the word, was it responsibility? Okay. Um, Tony, do you, this is before it goes to the vote, this is just a question. Tony, do you feel that Pedigree Dog Alliance is too long a major title? You do. And what would you suggest in its place? The, the original suggestion, I think, was National Canine Alliance. And I'm quite comfortable with just Canine Alliance. Canine Alliance. There seem to be... Yeah, there seemed to be a little bit dis dissent about the, about the, the word canine. Um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm about to get to the strap line to keep Mrs. Johnson happy. Now, stop pushing me, Howard. Um, whatever title we decide on, my strap line, my, the suggestion of my strap... Sounds like I'm talking about ladies' underwear here. <coughs> which doesn't happen very often. <laughs> My strap line would be simply responsible for dogs. Okay. So we need to vote on the name and then a strap line. Right, okay. So we're talking about, we're talking about, it, it, it looks, Martin, like it's down to Canine Alliance, responsible for pedigree dogs. How does that sound? Well, I'm going to hand this over to Martin because he's the chairman. And Lind Linda's going to have the last word before it goes to the vote. Hello, Linda Lewis, Dalmatians. Um, I've, my colleague here has, has suggested pedigree dogs united. Too, too, too much like football. Yeah, we no? said that we... <laughs> too long. Right, thank you very much. Now, can I have a proposal then for Canine Alliance with a strap line responsible for pedigree dogs? Yeah. Have we got a proposer for Canine Alliance? Yeah, Simon. Simon. No, no, Ron Stewart made the original Who? proposal. He should have a Who? Ron Stewart. Yes. Oh, right, sorry. Yes, Ron. Okay, fine, thank you. With a strap line of responsible for pedigree dogs. Hmm? Yeah. Yes? Can I have a seconder for that, please? Mr. Wilberg, can we have a vote, please? All those in favour, put their hands up. Right, say it again. You've got to say what it is again. Right. Canine Alliance, responsible for pedigree dogs. It has been proposed. It has been seconded. And now we need a vote. Now, I think, looking around the room, I don't see any need to count. I think you'll all agree it is carried. Everybody happy with that? 
How many are against it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How many abstentions? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. It's carried, sorry. We'll see you.